Fred was a young scientist looking for a dream job. His favorite professor, Mr. Ford, always worked in his lab alone. But one day, he made an exception and invited Fred to assist him in a secret research project. When Fred arrived at the lab, he found Mr. Ford unconscious on the floor. His colleagues said that halfway through his latest experiment, the lights went out. James, Dylan, and Ashley were nearby. James said he was Mr. Ford's lab assistant. When the lights went out, it was too dark to see what was happening. Dylan said he'd been looking through some documents in his office nearby. And Ashley said she'd been cleaning the lab. Who's lying? James, Mr. Ford always worked alone. Fred was his first and only assistant. When Mr. Ford got better, he offered Fred a job in a big company making robotic dogs. But first, Fred had to do one logical task. There are three drawers with pills in Mr. Ford's lab. One of them contains only blue pills, another only red pills, and the third drawer has both blue and red pills. All the boxes are labeled incorrectly. Fred can only take one pill from one of the drawers to find out the color of the pills in each drawer. How can he do that? To label the drawers correctly, Fred should take a pill from the drawer that supposedly contains both blue and red pills. Since we know that all labels are incorrect, this drawer must contain either only red pills or only blue pills. If Fred finds a red pill, he should label that drawer as red. Then change the name on the red drawer to blue and label the remaining drawer as red and blue. Fred texted his girlfriend Sarah to tell her the good news about his new job. He asked her out for dinner, but she answered, Hey, I woke up with the flu. I don't want to infect you. I'd rather stay at home and rest. Fred video called her and realized she was lying as soon as she answered the call. How did the guy understand it? Look at her bed. It seems that she's getting ready to go out tonight. Also, why would she wear high heels if she wanted to stay at home? Fred was very upset and decided to follow Sarah. He saw her eating dinner with another man in a fancy restaurant. Fred approached their table and exclaimed, Sarah, who's this man? Sarah said he was her father. Fred took a look at the man and believed her. Why? They have the same rare eye color and similar moles under their right eyes. On the first day of work, Fred came to his office. It was full of guard robotic dogs. They were taught to react to every movement. Suddenly, the dogs went out of control. They tore the lab down. Luckily, Fred managed to hide. He needed to escape as soon as possible. Fred noticed three objects. A bat, a water gun, and a small ball. Which object should he use to escape? He could choose the bat to fight the dogs, but there are too many of them. He could pick the water gun, but it's small and pretty much useless. But this small ball is the right choice. It'll distract the dogs, and Fred will be able to escape. After that unfortunate incident with the robotic dogs, Fred went to another job interview. He decided to become a hotel manager. The hotel owner asked Fred to crack a riddle. He wanted to check his logical skills. What's black when you get it, red when you use it, and white when you're through with it. Fred nailed the riddle and got the job. What did he answer? Charcoal. Fred started his work. A new guest arrived. This guest was very unusual because it was a giraffe. Can you help Fred find the best room for this animal? For the giraffe, the best option is the room with the larger door. Another hotel guest, Shelly, called Fred from her room. She was crying. Someone had stolen her expensive dress. She needed it for a birthday party. Shelly was sure it was one of the hotel employees. Who else could get it without damaging the lock? What do you think? Who stole the dress?
there's a silver bead by the bed. The criminal didn't notice they had dropped it during the heist. And this maid has a bracelet with the same beads. Fred went to check the laundry room. He found his colleague Ashley unconscious on the floor. The police examined the crime scene and interviewed people who had been to the laundry room the night before. Alice said, I came at 7.30 p.m. There were no other people in the laundry. When I was about to leave, another woman came in. Helen said, I came there at 9.15 p.m. There was nothing special about that day. I just washed my clothes and left. And Sally said, I'm blind. I don't know if there was anybody in that room when I was inside. Who's the criminal? Helen. Trying to protect herself, Ashley pulled an earring out of her ear. Next day, Fred faced another crime at work. Someone had stolen some food supplies from the warehouse at night. The stockman called Fred first thing in the morning. Look at these two pictures of the warehouse. Can you spot which food had been stolen? Right, and some more. Fred questioned three employees who had worked the night shift. Alice said, I was preparing a monthly report in my office. I never go to the warehouse anyway. Dan said, I was at the register all night. There were lots of customers. I wouldn't have had time to go to the warehouse. And Jenny said, I was flipping burgers. I didn't leave the kitchen. Who stole the food? Look at the footprints in the warehouse. One set belongs to the stockman, and the other belongs to the thief. The accountant and the cook are females. They wouldn't leave such footprints. It means Dan is lying. He did go to the warehouse. A delivery guy bought two paintings to decorate hotel rooms. Fred refused to pay for these pictures and returned them, all because the paintings were supposed to be identical. Can you see three differences between them? Here they are! Suddenly, one of the hotel guests ran down from the second floor screaming. She saw a ghost in her room. Fred hurried to the room. Can you help him find the ghost? It's this guy. He's too transparent to be human. Two brothers, Stan and Chuck, met for a quiet birthday party in the hotel restaurant. The cook asked how many candles she should put on the cake. The birthday guy, Chuck, answered, When Stan was six years old, I was half his age. If Stan is 40 now, how old am I? How many candles should the cook put on the cake? That's right, 37. Fred had an interesting conversation with one of the guests, Mr. Wilson. It turns out that the man once worked as a NASA scientist. He promised Fred he'd help him join a space program. But first, Fred had to crack one tricky riddle. If there are seven bears in a room, and each of them hugs the rest of the bears once, and only once, how many bear hugs would we get? Fred said 21 hugs, and it was the correct answer. Mr. Wilson was satisfied and gave Fred a folder with the documents needed for his dream job. Fred left the folder on the table in his office. When he came back, he noticed it was empty. Fred questioned three employees. All of them entered his office while he was away. Kelly said, I took your stapler this morning. Mine was broken. Then I brought it back. I put it on the table, but I didn't touch anything else. The delivery guy who had brought something for Fred said, I left the box in your office. That's what I was told to do. And Alice said, I was cleaning your office and your table too, but I didn't take any documents. Fred had a fingerprint kit with him, you know, just in case. He pulled the fingerprints from the table. He also took the fingerprints of the three suspects. Can you guess who stole the documents? Kelly. She said that she had only touched the stapler, but her fingerprints are on the folder as well, 
On the table, there are also Alice's fingerprints, but it's okay because she was cleaning it. Soon, Fred became a member of a space crew. They were originally scheduled to meet with the mothership on the surface of the moon, but due to some mechanical issues, his ship was forced to land 200 miles away from the meeting point. During landing, most of the equipment aboard was damaged. Since the team's survival depends on reaching the mothership, they should only take the most crucial items with them. Below, there are 10 items that are still intact. Fred's task is to rank them according to their importance for reaching the meeting point. Can you help him? These oxygen tanks are the most important element. The crew needs them to survive. The tanks with water should be the second priority. The stellar map is in the third place. Without it, the ship will get lost. The fourth place goes to the food concentrate. The solar-powered FM receiver transmitter should be the fifth. The crew members need them to communicate with the mothership. The nylon rope gets the sixth place. It's useful in scaling cliffs and tying unconscious crew members together. The seventh most important item is the first aid kit. Number eight is the parachute silk. The ship needs some protection from sunlight. The self-inflating life raft is the ninth, and the signal flares are the last on this list. They can be used to send a distress signal when the mothership is in sight.